right. <laughs> Moving on to another game um, that isn't as broken, Tomb Raider. It's a legacy uh, brand. And, you know, there's been lots of news about Tomb Raider recently as Crystal Dynamics has stated that they're kind of trying to merge the rebooted story of Tomb Raider or that Lara Croft with the OG Lara Croft. Now, for any Tomb Raider fan, um, some appreciated the reboot, but a lot of core fans didn't um, just because it was a huge divergent of playing from, you know, this established uh, Tomb Raider um, who's like knows what she's doing to then mm -hmm. playing as her just starting off and, you know, just didn't land very well with the core community. Now, they, they didn't say exactly uh, what the next Tomb Raider will be, but they did say it, it's a while's away. They're, they're not ready to announce anything. But mm. how do you guys feel about Tomb Raider? Because I feel like she's one of those icons in gaming that um, kind of everybody knows about. Were you guys a fan of the reboots? And do you feel like this is the right move for Crystal Dynamic to kind of merge the two types of Lara Croft? And how would they go about doing that? I don't know. That's the weirdest part. I really like the the reboot because they made her feel like an actual character, gave her stakes, and like just reinvented the gameplay. I, I thought it was really exciting to play those games. I don't really care about the the original ones. I think really sure. As as far as like being a legacy property, they're they're great uh, to look back on and everything. But to bring back the character, unite the timelines, whatever that means, like who cares? <laughs> just keep making, just keep making modern Lara Croft games. What what are you bringing over? Uh, I'll ask this question because I've only played like bits and pieces of the new, like the rebooted Tomb Raider, mm -hmm. Tomb Raider franchi franchise. Um, is it does it feel like a natural progression from the OG games, or does no, it feel like something no, completely no. different? Yeah. Talked about it feels it's like completely something completely different. different. Yeah. And the thing that you know, the OG Tomb Raider games were very heavily based on puzzle solving. Okay. Like there were lots of puzzles. Um, so a okay. lot of people who grew up with that Tomb Raider felt like, you know, kind of going that route of the reboots that it feels like Uncharted, where mm -hmm. it's not supposed to be Uncharted. Um, so I, I think that's the main hesitation with the Tomb Raider community in terms of the reboot. Um, also, her design, a lot of people did like, you know, the fact that she kind of looks out of this world. Uh, she she looks like, you know, uh, you know, just this glorified dream character. Um, and you know what? Like, as a female, I actually like the old looking Laura just because she was it, it's the cheesiness of her like she mm. she is that girl she has a big chest but then she's also able to like do all these action stunts and like th those don't come in the way of her you know punching out anyone right um but but i was okay with how she looked so then they they kind of toned down her features because she's a much younger um tomb raider she's just starting out her journey in the reboots mm. and with that they kind of changed her her personality as well she's not she's very vulnerable mm. um whereas yeah. the original lara croft is very strong she's very quick on her remarks um mm -hmm. she's sassy so i think that's where the main um concerns were for the community huh and then i, I also will say like at this is crystal dynamics they're working on avengers exactly. i have no clue when this game could come out yeah and then is it this it? year the 25th anniversary for, for Lord? Is Trump? it this year? Yeah. 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 This year. Oh so wow. That's, you that's why this year would've been perfect to That that's what I think is the strangest thing. Like yeah. coming out on the 25th anniversary of this and only saying we got news about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> like I do it, you know. Like I do think that they have a mobile game or something in development. Yes. And that's it. And then they announce like there's going to be a, like an anime series on Netflix that continues yes. the the reboot saga. But otherwise, to come out for like a milestone event like this and just say, yeah, we're, you know, yeah. we're working on something, that seems like a waste. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like Tomb Raider is one of those characters like Sonic that's kind of like had their own hurdles in terms of video games that they're not like to the level that they used to be. Yeah. Um, so they're trying to like. I think fine crystal dynamics is trying to find their footing with tomb raider and where they go from there because they really did try um you know the uncharted route mm -hmm. and you you can't really copy something 
that's out there. You have to make it your own yep. if you're going to be inspired yep. uh, by mm -hmm. that. And I, I didn't really feel that they made that their own. Like you could really, and Steve, you've played the reboots. Yeah. Marcel, did you play the reboots? I yeah, I played the reboots. So you could definitely, if you think yeah. of, you know, Lara Croft there, you could see her in an Uncharted game. Yeah. You could sure. see Nathan Drake in a Tomb Raider game. Even from my like lack of experience playing the games, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Very much. Yeah. They're so close. And, you know, I think whatever they do moving forward, they really have to make her shine. They have to make that type of IP different than yeah. whatever, you know, although Uncharted is supposedly done, whatever mm -hmm. this Indiana Jones game will be, that's kind right. of like flagging red alert. It's going to be yeah. Uncharted. <laughs> you know, they have to find a way to stand out. And I think that's their main hurdle. Yeah. Um, and with their, you know, lack of success there with the Avengers game, I don't know how hopeful I am <laughs> with this Tomb Raider game. Like, I, I don't know. I, I used to play the old Tomb Raider games back at, like mm -hmm. on PC, and, and I, I know like her care, like how she was, and like yeah, she was like cocking. She like before you can even tell her no, don't jump there. She already jumped and everything. Yeah. Like, she's that type <laughs> of person. Um, and I did, I did, I did appreciate the reboot. Um, the one that actually hurt me was actually number three. I felt I felt mm. like they actually took a step back in her personality. Like I can understand, like like it, like from where she is from back in the old games to and and how they like okay, well she's developing to that character. They were they yeah. were heading to the right direction in the first yeah. one and the second one. But three, like I found like she was like extra whiny and she took like a step back and like some of her choices. I'm like you won't make that choice. Like why would you even make that choice whatsoever? Um, then I feel like three kind of hurt them and it kind of like hurt like who Laura Croft was going to become in a way. So, yeah. Well, it's funny that you bring up the third one because yeah. Crystal Dynamics talking about them making another one means that they're taking back the IP because Eidos Montreal was the one that did Shadow of the Tomb Raider, yeah. which is why like a lot of people were like, oh, this doesn't feel like it belonged in the trilogy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think that is interesting that now it's coming back to Crystal Dynamics, so, you know, assumingly like after they're done with Avengers. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or during, you know, maybe they just want more on their plate. Who knows? Well, I, I looked it up because I, I was curious how many people are staffed at Crystal. They only have like 300 people. So I don't that, know. If that's why be... the Avengers is like, there's like 10 studios working on. There's yeah. like Eidos yeah. Montreal, Crystal. Like they created a whole branch, I think, for Avengers specifically at Crystal. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder like, I, and I wonder, I was going to mention this last week. I totally forgot when we were talking about kind of the, what Avengers in the state that it's in right now. I wonder if like a Final Fantasy 14 situation ends up happening for that game where like right. Crystal is just like, we can't do this no more. And then Square Enix is like, all right, we're going to hand this off to somebody else. You know, yeah. I, I, know. I, I could I that, could see that happening. That's going to be a hard buy over uh, to put like RPG core RPG elements um, in a game like Avengers to sell well, to those to those that's, fans. That's why I bring up Final Fantasy 14. Yeah. Is like. Because that that game, like it was a disaster, from what yeah. I understand, like yeah. it was a yes. complete yes. and utter catastrophe. And Square Enix just didn't give up on it; ended up handing it off to somebody else. And they were like, "Just, just do something." Yeah. yeah. And now, and, and then it's just now though, it's like top, almost top of the list. Sometimes, yeah. Like, I always yeah. see a lot of people like either starting it out or like people always recommending to start off Final Fantasy yeah. fourteen. Yeah. So I wonder if at any point Crystal's like, "We we want to work on Tomb Raider," like we can't do this Avengers thing and Square Enix just passes it on to somebody else so then they can get fast-tracked on that next Tomb Raider game. Yeah. I really wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting, up a good point. but I feel like Crystal Dynamics wouldn't make that decision. It'd be more of a Square, Square decision. Enix. Yeah. Square and Disney, yeah. yeah. Crystal definitely wants that business of Avengers um, because, you know, before that, they were they were doing things, but not, not much outside of Tomb Raider, right? Um, mm. So I feel like that would have to be coming from Disney or uh, Square. Um, but I'm going to move on to some quick news just because in other like WTF, what the heck's going on in gaming? Uh, Konami actually had to clarify a miscommunication that happened a few weeks earlier. So a few weeks earlier, there was like this news story that published that said Konami is like doing this um, re they're reorganizing their divisions and closing down their gaming division. Yeah. Oh, no. Who cares? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Everyone, we're not like, going to so get Metal Gear Survive 2. We're not going to get Metal Gear Survive 2. No. No, Yu-Gi-Oh. Darn oh my it. God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the internet was in turmoil. Um, yeah. But now they actually clarified that they're they're actually just 
reorganizing their gaming <laughs> <laughs> division um so their production house is just merging with some other division so it's not it, they're not closing so everyone be happy we're, we're, we're getting more metal gear survive yeah cool. they're um, making a lot of pink uh pachinko machines on yes, they, right. <laughs> they do make a lot of pachinko yeah. machines i think that's a different division yeah. than like their gaming yeah you know, ironically and ironically enough on their top 10 list in japan they actually have the top game right now as of right now i can't remember i'm looking for it right now but uh, they actually have one of the top 10 games because of the one yeah yeah Pachinko man, when you yeah. you know in Japan when you're walking down those streets and you hear those pachinko machines, they're like calling you. They're like, come in. Really? Huh? Yeah. And it's just so packed. But I, I never went in. I was too intimidating. <laughs> I, I I have addiction issues with video games. I'm <laughs> odd. I, I would have been in there all all day. A whole other problem in my life. But I wanted to talk about the fact that what if we lost Konami? Like I know we're making jokes about Metal Gear Survive. But they are also a legacy brand. Let's yeah. let's face it. I feel like, are we? Is this the point? Like now, we we just have to kind of get used to. Yeah, any legacy brand could just go at this moment. We, you know, Sega's kind of like not. They're they're there, but are they there? I wouldn't shed a tear if Konami went away. I'll I, be honest. But, like, but hold on. But then, do they sell the IPs? Like, do we end up getting a Silent Hill through someone else? Or do they? Right to uh, Kojima. I, yeah. <laughs> Please, he will and buy the, it right away. <laughs> the caveat here is, I want to see those IPs go to you know studios mm. that will actually use them. Give me a new Castlevania. Give me yes. Yeah. Oh I my god. Know, like, the fact that Konami is just sitting on these without a real like a care in the world just yeah. angered me beyond belief. I can't and then, believe after Devil May Cry Five, Konami wasn't like, "We need to just make another Castlevania game like that, like yeah. immediately." You know? Yeah, yeah it, it's frustrating. It, it's really frustrating. With the success of the Castlevania animated show, yeah, like, yeah. it just it's right there. Konami, make the game, <laughs> make the game. But maybe this reorganization of their production divisions may open up room for collaboration silent hill mm. yeah Kojima. Yep. Maybe. yeah hope i'm really just pulling at strings here just make make the silent hill game guys yeah. please Give kojima metal gear let's just make the world right i can't go through 2021 not knowing mm -hmm. i just have no. such a low expectation for konami at this point like i don't expect anything from them so if they came out and they're like we're partnering with playstation or whoever to do like a new silent hill cool but until they do that i don't whatever i don't really I'll, care i'll throw a wild card question out of the big three uh companies who who, who buys konami mm, it would i would who who's who's our big three is it uh, what, nintendo, nintendo nintendo, nintendo microsoft, microsoft and, probably like yeah, i would Sony. say nintendo for Yu Gi Oh. Mm. i'd say sony i don't think any of them because a lot of people kind of forget and camille you kind of talked about this but like outside of north america and europe konami isn't a video game company yeah. they do so much with uh like electronics and then pachinko machines i don't know if that's really valuable to anyone yeah i think it's the ip that they would want so maybe it's it's a, 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 exactly, a no playstation takes metal gear exactly. i think yeah. that's your problem that's the best case scenario if they were looking to get out of like developing games or holding mm -hmm. on tight yeah. I, I don't see any like there's not really a value in having konami under your umbrella is there i mean to have the ips you don't think like if if, if someone like playstation i, yeah. I like the development studio there i don't think that like yeah you know, i guess so i guess so name. actually now because we know the head of those you know huge ips started their own studio um yeah. so you would more yeah. want to buy the make the deal for the exactly. ip buy the ip and then get kojima productions to work on silent hill metal gear um in collaboration say with sony right I, I, that would be the move i'm gonna pose another question though was what was that one you know brand gaming brand out there that kind of went out of business that hit you guys hard or like not out of business but kind of fall from you know their golden era because for me it would be sega oh sega. yeah oh yeah yeah uh, Honestly, if you ask I, me, I, I tie Sega with Nintendo for like so much. Like, like they really have every almost every game with Nintendo, and I, yeah. I'm at the point like Nintendo just absorb them, and then then yeah. you also then you also get Atlas, and then you have the whole Persona series, and right. then, you know. So, uh, if you um, asked me like years ago, I would have said Capcom, 
But now with this resurgence, the Capcom's killing it right now. But yeah, that was the studio where I was like, "Come on, guys, you're better than this." And yeah. they they both they turned it around. That's a tough question. I don't know. Part of me, like in my head, I would say something like like Xbox, kind of the the fall from grace when the Xbox One originally came out. But mm-hmm. now they're like, they're I think they're in a good enough spot mm-hmm. that it doesn't really count. So I don't know. That's that's a tough one. But the Capcom, you're right, Steve. Like Capcom was like. Seriously, guys, what are you doing? Like, yeah, come on. Stop putting Let's, out a billion Street Fighter games. What's happening here? Yeah. Like, well, no, exactly. That, that's actually the point. Is like, just stop making the fifteenth version of Street Fighter yeah. Five <laughs> and just release Street Fighter Six for the love of God! Yeah. Oh my God! And make a good Marvel versus Capcom mm-hmm. game while you're at it. You know? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. See, that that's another cool. one that who knows if that will ever happen again. And, I think um, I think Infinite was like a risk because mm. there was there was even like something that happened regarding Capcom and Marvel where they were like saying, Oh, we're never going to make another one again. So Marvel Capcom infinite was like the risk. They were like, okay, there's one more go at it. But I think that was a Marvel problem more than it was Capcom. You think it was a Marvel problem? I don't know. Well, that's a whole nother discussion. Because Marvel, Marvel games was like, no, at the time, I think their initiative was make sure everything is concurrent with the films. So they didn't have the X-Men in there, the fantastic four or anything like that. And the game suffered for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Which if they do it now, they have everyone. So like, just let them do it again. Like, agreed. You want everything. Like, agreed. Them, put it in the Simpsons if you want to. You'll <laughs> make, too, you know? like, <laughs> make it two D. Make it two D, or at least yes. a retro mode, please. Yeah. Uh, oh my God, so much that we discussed today. I was surprised that we were able to fit all in uh, in this tight amount of time, but uh, we did it, guys. High five. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, Marcel, Yay. thank you so much for joining yes, thank us. Thank you for having me. It was really, it was, every- it was an amazing time being here. So. Oh, it was great having you. Um, where can everybody find you and keep up with you? And um, what do you MD, have MD14, as just as it says right here below on pretty much everything. So. All right. We will. Now, Steve, you've, you've given us the lowdown on Hitman. What are you working on for the website? Uh, I still got a little bit left to go with uh, some Hitman coverage, and then I promise I'll shut up about it for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I don't promise. Uh, but yeah, that, <laughs> that, that's what I got going on for uh, the next foreseeable future, at least this week, and then, you know, turn my attention to something new. That's All sweet. right. Okay. And Caboose? Uh, yes, yeah, still running my, uh, my MK11 tournament, Champions of the Realms 2. We just finished up week six. Going into the final two weeks, week seven starts this week on Wednesday. Um, and then besides that, waiting for the trailer for that Mortal Kombat movie that's supposedly coming this month. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and then that's it. You know, that then then after that, it's the countdown to Gotham Knights. Still uploading videos on YouTube.com slash Caboose. Twitch.tv slash Caboose if you want to check me stream in there. And then Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK. Awesome. I'm going to be uh, diving into Final Fantasy VII Remake again um, and hopefully waiting for some Nintendo news on the anniversary of The Legend of Zelda, which is this month. Hopefully a Breath of the Wild 2 trailer. I'm hoping crossing been my some fingers. some rumors out there. That's all I got to say. Crossing my fingers. <laughs> um, so you can stay tuned with everything that I got going on at This Is Camco on Twitter and everywhere else. And for those of you at home that joined in, remember you can keep up with Squad at Squad State on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff, as well as our website and the cool articles that Steve's going to be writing about about Hitman at squadstate.com. So be sure to check it out. We will see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much for joining us and have a good Monday.